Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. A new Congress is preparing to convene in earnest, and the free press is perhaps preparing another Twitter files release. While we wait for that, we should reflect on different possible views we can take toward events yet to come, near and far. I have noticed over nearly 12 years of running conservative news and views, and now about 10 months of doing declarations of truth, that too many people take a short view. In fact, a society, a civilization, must take the long view, or it will not survive. But those who do take the long view are better able to survive while others do not. Bear with me, and I will explain. Before I begin, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. And be sure to check, the, uh, uh, check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which depicts Marty McFly's DeLorean time machine from the Back to the Future franchise. And this message from Emmett L. Doc Brown. Marty, whatever happens, don't ever go to 2021. Good advice. Because 2021 looked like a dead end. Then again, maybe not. We don't have to let it if we take the long view. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the silver dot with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do so long as it's legal tender. Now, before considering the long view versus the short view, we have to define value. The late Robert A. Heinlein articulated the best definition of value I've ever read. Value, he says, is the relationship between what a person can do with a thing, its use to him, and what he must do to get it, its cost to him. The long view is the view beyond the lifetime of any one person. As such, it cannot possibly be of immediate use to anyone now alive. Or so one might think. You might surprise yourself, but I digress. So, the long view creates a problem for anyone holding it. He must pay its cost now, but the uses will come not to him, or even to his own generation, but to the next and following generations. Greed and spite are two classic short view uh, motives. The greedy person wants all he can use or thinks he can use now. Let others, especially the next generation, pay the cost. The spiteful person has a worse motive. He wants to hurt others, whatever the cost to himself or anyone else. An individual acting from greed or spite causes damage enough, damage being that which imposes costs and destroys usefulness. An entire society that embraces the short view and not the long must inevitably destroy itself, as did Rome in the Middle Ages and the Byzantine Empire a thousand years later, as the West threatens to do now. Books must balance, and debts, deferred costs, must be repaid. I'll offer some examples. Low birth rates in civilized uh, countries worldwide reflect short view thinking. To too many people, children are a bother. No one thinks about the next generation or even about who will take care of them in their old age. Children do impose an immediate cost. And in an industrial society, they are of no immediate use. That anyone would make this kind of calculation probably shows that our society has forgotten how to love. Nevertheless, people are making that calculation, even if only subconsciously. And how does anyone uh, rest easy about the who will take care of them in old age? Simple. Franklin Delano Roosevelt encouraged people to turn over their old age cares to the government. The full name of Social Security is 
the Old Age Survivorship and Disability Insurance Program. And that's no accident. It is also unsustainable. At best, it recalls the famous swindle by one Carlo Pietro Giovanni Guglielmo Tebaldo uh, Ponzi. At worst, it puts the government itself at moral hazard. The welfare state creates the concept useless eater. The only use the clients of Social Security or welfare have to the government is continued electoral support of those now in power. Once that use ends, their usefulness ends. Hence the Canadian push to offer suicide facilitation and not palliation to those suffering from age-related or other chronic infirmities. Now, some traditional societies still exist, and they offer an instructive contrast. Any traditional society respects its elders and turns to them for advice. Now, some might object that this leads to stagnation, but hey, these societies persist which makes them excellent examples of the long view. Consider the Amish, who, when they came to America in the 18th century, determined to separate from the larger world. They maintain as few connections as possible, no more than a community telephone, and no entertainments, no electricity, because that requires connection to a grid. Because they separated from the world, they are independent of it and could easily survive a general social collapse. More to the point, they support family at all levels. Now, true, some wags said that they essentially avoided all technological advancement after 1850. Now, in fact, that's when the great schism between the old order and the new happened. That had nothing to do with technology. But they, pers but they persist. They're, they're still around. And if our modern technology fails, as often happens after great storms, they can survive without it. Now, had the modern society taken the long view, it would have permitted, even encouraged its members to keep systems in place, enabling them to survive in the face of technological failure. This did not happen. So when technology fails, people die. Hold that thought, because now I'm going to apply the long view to a concept literally out of this world. Before I go there, I want to shout out to a, a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You're not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect uh, rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLives.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, consider an application of the long view beyond a traditional agricultural society. And for this, we really have to go out of this world. Elon Musk, founder of SpaceX and Tesla and Neuralink and The Boring Company, takes a very long view. Years ago, he explained his long view to the International Associate, Ast International Astronaut Astronautical Federation in Guadalajara in 2016 and in Adelaide, Australia in 2017. Basically, he gave humanity a choice. We could stay on Earth and wait for some future extinction-level event to wipe us out, or we can go out to other planets and eventually to other stars so that no one disaster could wipe us out. He also offered something that could be useful to anyone having any sort of hope. He talked about the value of inspiration. I quote, You want to be inspired by things. You want to wake up in the morning and think that the future is going to be great. And that's what being a 
spacefaring civilization is all about. Unquote Elon Musk. And that's the long view. The notion that the cost you pay now will buy things of greater use later. To that end, he developed rocket ships with reusable boosters and payload carriers. He is now developing the ultimate fully reusable rocket, able to deliver payloads almost as heavy as what the Saturn V could deliver, and to do it much more often, three times a week, or even three times a day. Now, even in the heyday of Project Apollo, those Saturns didn't go up more than, than maybe twice or three times a year. Happily, at every stage, he develops things useful to other people. So, those people will pay him for those uses. The revenues finance the next development projects, all leading to the same goal, a multiplanetary future for mankind. But has Elon Musk even conceived of how long a long view a multiplanetary future will require? Founding a city on Mars, if that's his first grand design, will present enough of a challenge. But he can fund that with current profits, and that city will likely be even more profitable because it will be the ideal launch point for mining and other expeditions to the asteroids and the outer planets. But Musk is on record talking, hopefully, of traveling to the stars and taking life with us. That will require a wait over many generations, if not for his company, then for any civilizational state that contracts with it for a program of multiplanetary, indeed multi-stellar, expansion. Let's lay aside Miguel Alcubierre's speculations on faster-than-light travel. Before him, Robert D. Ensman developed population, uh, propulsion, rather, propulsion plant and ship designs that one can build now. Now, those ships might be able to travel at a significant fraction of the speed of light, perhaps only slightly slower, but no faster. That one brutal fact imposes a waiting period longer than this country's greatest projects have ever lasted. True. Relativity will cut perceived transit time for the officers and crew of any colony or scout ship. And that benefit would apply to a robot scout as, a scout as well. But the launch authority must wait the full time. We're talking about transit time of the scout craft to a target star and then transit time for a legible signal, or worse, the scout itself, to return to Earth. That's nine years minimum to scout the Alpha Centauri double star, or Proxima Centauri, that's Alpha Centauri C. Figure 20, 25, or 30 years to scout the nearest stars that might have either Jupiter's or Earth's orbiting them. Projects Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo combined lasted for 12 years. Then the long view failed, resulting in cancellation. Now, could this be the true uh, resolution of the Fermi Paradox? The Fermi Paradox says that although the probability of the existence of an extra so uh, solar civilization is extremely high, no such civilization has contacted us. Well, where is everybody? Maybe they've given up because they didn't take the long view. How about that? Any space program, even one limited to our solar system, requires the long view. But a similar long view informed the decisions that the major powers made during the Age of Exploration multiplanetary expansion program would appeal to a true civilization state. Hoping to perpetuate its values, the benefits might be entirely non-material, the peace of mind that knowing that the human race and civilizational values would endure. But the long view doesn't have to apply only to a space program. It applies to everything else a civilization does, including how it runs. The long view prevails. The short view destroys itself. Link in the description to the article, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store, and to rsilverlines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel, and links to, uh, 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 links to my new space playlist, a video of Elon Musk talk in Guadalajara, and a video by one Marcus House in which he 
played back another of Elon Musk's talks along this line. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.